Okay, let's do this. Camera. Hi, everybody. Am I audible? Am I visible today? Welcome to another webinar. Excellent. Much appreciated for letting me know that I'm audible. So, uh, welcome to another webinar. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen and, um, and then we will uh, commence. Okay, here we go. Today we're going to talk about CAL, which is an abbreviation for column array loudspeaker, and it allows us to steer sound in the vertical. Now, um, let me uh, fix one thing. There we go. Okay, and we're back. So CAL, column array loudspeaker, which allows us to steer sound in the vertical plane as we're about to discover. But before we do so, I propose that first uh, we're going to look at um, how to use Zoom because that is the platform that we like to use for our webinars. So there we go. Uh, those that are joining us through Zoom are expected to have a window in front of them, not unlike the one you see over here. Um, if you want to see who else is joining you on today's uh, session, there's a button called Participants. And if you click on Participants, a window pops up on the right hand side, which shows you your fellow attendees that are joining you on the call. However, um, we encourage you to ask questions, but in order to do so, we would like you to make use of the raise hand feature. And in order to raise your hand, there is a button at the bottom right corner that allows you to do so. Once you click that button, a blue hand icon appears in the corner of my eye, and I know that you are about to ask a question, at which time I will try to find an, a, a white space in my narrative, and then I will try to answer that question to the best of my abilities. In order to ask your question, we encourage you to make use of the chat functionality. Uh, and in order to make use of the chat functionality, you should click on the blue icon, which has chat written below it. And once you click on that icon, the right pane splits in half and a chat box uh, opens up. In the bottom, there is a field where you can enter a message and address the nation. That is to say, everyone that is joining us on the call. Or if you happen to see a family member, fellow colleague or a friend, you can also address your message to that person in private. That pretty much concludes the explanation of Zoom. That being said, I'm confident that we're also being watched at this time uh, through the Facebook live stream, which you can find in the Myerson user community. Um, welcome to those people that are joining us. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, there's uh, 8,500 of you and rising, and um, this is where we stream our webinars. Okay, that concludes the household notes. Today is all about CAL, about column array loudspeakers. That being said, um, we operate our CAL loudspeakers using Compass, and that means that for those that have not watched our previous webinars, uh, we're not going to explain how to you know, work with Compass uh, from scratch. Uh, we already did that in two previous webinars. Uh, introduction to Compass in English, which was done by myself, or in Spanish by Hugo Arce. Um, both of those can be found on our YouTube Thinking Sound channel, where you see the link uh, in your screen. This is where you will find those webinars, Introduction to Compass, as well as all other webinars that we have uh, conducted until uh, today, both in Spanish and English. Okie dokie. So, Again, we're going to look at one pillar of the um, precision tool set, which is our turnkey solution for designing systems all the way to deploying systems. And uh, CAL is somewhat unique in that regard because um, with exception of the design part, with exception of Map XT, CAL is literally everything that you see in front of you. It is an entire PA system built into a single column. It has the power supplies, it has the signal processing, it has the uh, signal distribution, and it has a build-in RM module, RM server module. So it's everything uh, in one package, which is, is quite remarkable if you think about it. That's an entire system, an entire precision tool set within a single uh, loudspeaker enclosure, as we're about to discover. So, um, as always, I have a checklist just to be, to be, to be prudent, to make sure that I don't forget anything. And uh, to be, today, the topic is going to be, what is Cal? Well, I already uh, lifted the tip of the veil. Um, 
what are its specifications. We're going to talk about how Kel loudspeakers can be mounted, about rigging, uh, how to get connected uh, to Cal using your computer, where you can find the uh, Cal pattern files um, and how to operate uh, and, and set the beam settings in Cal using Compass. Okay, um, here you see a big chunk uh, of the Myersound portfolio and in the middle are our Cal loudspeakers. They come in three models as we're about to dis, uh, discover. That being said, some of these products we've already discussed. For example, uh, on the left hand side we see our Ashby loudspeakers which were covered in last week's Intelligent DC week. Uh, same goes for the MM4 XP and a lot of these loudspeakers uh, are also available as external powered uh, intelligent DC versions. So we already talked about that. Um, we talked about the creative part of things. We talked about Galaxy, uh, Galaxy platform, uh, which in the near future will also allow you to run uh, Space Map Go, as um, as we already uh, uh, lifted a little bit of the veil when we introduced the tool set. Um, we've talked about Compass. We've talked about Map XT. Um, We've introduced you to the power distribution already. Um, next week is going to be Cine Studio. Next week we're all going to talk about Cine Studio products, uh, about matricing and how to, and we're going to do case studies for uh, cinema products. So uh, we've already covered a lot of territory in the uh, Myerson portfolio, but today we are going to talk about Cal, which is in the center um, of this product poster. So what is Cal? Well, it's a self-powered loudspeaker system, which, which because that is our that is our that is our our trademark self-powered uh, loudspeaker. It's a column array loudspeaker. That's why it's called CAL. It's an abbreviation, C-A-L for column array loudspeaker, and it's designed and optimized for vertical beam steering. It features a discrete onboard class D amplifier channels, which are processed by sophisticated algorithms, and each transducer is amplified and processed individually, as we're about to discover. It was the first loudspeaker that was certified for AVB interoperability by the Avenue, uh, Avenue Alliance. Weather protection speaks for itself um, because this can also be used outdoors. And uh, later this week, we're going to have a case study, and boy, will that Cal loudspeaker be used outdoors, as you're about to discover. Okay. What are typical applications where we use Cal loudspeakers? Typically, you use a Cal loudspeaker in reverberant spaces that require a low profile sound reinforcement for voice reproduction. Uh, think of stadiums, airports, train stations, theme parks, convention centers, commercial centers, places of worship, shopping malls, and retail spaces. And the list goes on and on and on. Cal comes uh, in three models. Uh, we'll look at those models um, in great detail, but in order to have accurate and precise beam control, we require high driver density. That is to say, specifically high high frequency driver density, which are the 20 millimeter uh, tweeters that are used in Cal. Sophisticated algorithms to achieve the beam steering, which requires, requires a vast amount of DSP capability. All of that lives within that single loudspeaker enclosure. And this is based on three decades of technological innovation and advanced research to achieve unprecedented accuracy in sound reproduction. So here we see the three models. There's the Cal32, because it has 32 transducers. There's the Cal64, which is twice as long, and it has 64 transducers. And then there's the Cal96, which is one and a half times longer than your Cal64, and has 96 transducers. Um, it's a modular approach, so what you see in the top right corner is what we call a driver plate, and a driver plate has two inch, uh, apologies, has two four inch cone drivers, and six 20 millimeters tweeters, 20 millimeter tweeters. And such a driver plate is the base model that we use uh, multiple instances of to make uh, a Cal32, Cal64, or a Cal96. These uh, transducers, as you've grown to expect, uh, as, as you've come to expect from us, uh, are of course uh, uh, produced in-house and the driver plates are assembled in-house. And in order to achieve that individual control, every transducer is amplified separately and processed separately. So here we have a bird's eye perspective of the three models. Here you see another picture of such a uh, driver plate module. And um, let's look at the top row of this uh, 
involved chart where we see both the amplitude response and the phase response uh, which goes for L uh, for all call uh, call loudspeakers regardless whether you have the the 32 the 64 or the 96 version they all have an amplitude response that is flat from 105 Hertz to 15 kilohertz plus four plus or minus uh, four decibels uh, the phase response is flat from 230 Hertz all the way up to 16.9 kilohertz plus minus 45 degrees. Of course, the larger your Cal loudspeaker is, uh, the more potent it will be. And uh, for Cal, this has been documented in uh, a, a slightly uh, different way because uh, rather than having different values for each model, we've settled with one value, for example, 98 dB peak. However, that 98 dB peak value for pink noise you will have reached after 30 meters for a Cal 32. The same 98 dB peak value for a Cal 64, which is twice as long and therefore two times more potent, will be reached at twice the distance at 60 meters. And the same 98 dB will be reached for a 96 Cal model with 96 transducers, which is one and a half times longer than the 64 at one and a half times the distance of a 64, therefore 90 meters. So you could also say that the throw, for lack of a better description, that the throw for these three different models is different depending on which model you use. And as I already indicated there, the, the naming convention, where do the numbers come from, is the sum of all transducers. So starting at the bottom, if we look at our Cal 32, then it has eight four inch cone drivers and 24 tweeters, which makes for sum of 32 transducers. However, the 64 has twice the amount of transducers and the 96 has 24 four inch cone drivers and 72 20 millimeter tweeters in total, making for a total amount of 96 transducers. And yes, this means that a Cal 96 has 96 channels of class D amplification, whereas the 64 only has 64 channels of amplification and the 32 only has 32 channels of amplification. As far as horizontal coverage is considered, they all have 120 degrees of horizontal coverage, but what sets Cal apart from conventional point source loudspeakers is of course that using our proprietary processing that the vertical angle can be changed using DSP as well as the tilt of the loudspeaker which can be changed using DSP. So the beam can be spread from as little as 5 degrees to as much as 30 degrees and the beam can be tilted, the angle can be changed uh, in 1 dB increments to plus 30 degrees out of the horizontal to negative 30 degrees of the horizontal. And it gets better because except for the 32 model, which is the smallest one, the other two models, which is your 64 and your 96, they allow you to split the beam, which means that rather than having a single beam, you can have two beams and you can steer them each in a different direction, which is a functionality that is available for the 64 and the 96 model. In terms of dimensions, it does not come as a surprise that the 96 with 96 transducer is a longer column, whereas the 32 is a shorter column. The width, of course, is the same and so is the depth. And the weight is, of course, proportional to the number of uh, transducers. So as little as 36 kilograms for a 32 to as much as 80 kilograms for a 96. Okie dokie. So here we see uh, the horizontal coverage, which is 120 degrees, 60 degrees in one direction until you see 60 degrees of angular attenuation and 60 degrees in the other direction until you see uh, six decibels of angular attenuation, making a total coverage angle of 120 degrees for all models for the 32, 64 and the 96. However, in the vertical, it is a little bit more involved. Let's start by looking at the low frequencies first. Um, a single Cal enclosure is not 100% radiating area. That is to say there is a part at the bottom where the electronics live, or the brain as we like to say it, there is a part at the bottom of every Cal loudspeaker which is about 50 centimeters tall that does not radiate any sound. However, the remnant the remnant is the portion of the column that radiates sound and for those that are familiar with Harry Olson you know that there is an important milestone 
Okay, it's, it's, it's not digital, it's not on or off, but there's an important milestone that tells us that for the frequency whose wavelength matches the length of my array, that the vertical coverage angle will be roughly 72 degrees. However, since these arrays have different lengths, that means that this 72 degree milestone of vertical coverage is a function of the length of the array. And that means that the 72 degree milestone for Cal 94 is reached at 135 hertz. Whereas the same 72 degree milestone for Cal 64, which is a short array, is re reached at 203 hertz. And it should not come as a surprise that the same 72 degree milestone for Cal 32 is reached one octave higher because the array is twice as short, the wavelength is twice as short. So at low frequencies, it is the length of the array that is the driving force. And if you have an application that is more sensitive for a well-behaved system at lower frequencies, then it is advised to use a longer loudspeaker, whereas uh, if you have an application where the situation is somewhat more forgiving with respect to low frequencies, you can get away with a short array. Needless to say, as we saw in a slide couple, a couple of slides ago, we also saw that, of course, the longer the Cal array is, the more powerful it is. But at low frequencies, it's primarily the length of the array that is the driving force, and three different array lengths mean three different milestones in this case. However, for mid and high frequencies, we can steer the sound where we want it to go, which is in the audience and not on the plaster. And that means that, um, as I already disclosed, if we look on the right hand side, we can have a beam which is as narrow as 5 degrees and steer it all the way up by 30 degrees or all the way down to 30 degrees. And for the 64 and 96 models, we can even split the beams and now we have two 5 degree beams or wire beams as we're about to discover and we can steer those as well to where we want them to go because if you think about it a cal 64 is basically two 32s living on top of each other whereas a cal 96 is basically a cal 64 living on top of a 32 or a 32 living on top of a 64 and then we get to use beam split okay that being said on the rear panel, you will find lots of useful functionality, and we're going to look at each and every one of those one step of a time. Uh, there is, of course, the option to introduce analog audio with loop-through functionality. We can add, uh, we can introduce digital audio AES-EBU uh, format. Uh, as was already disclosed during the introduction, it accepts uh, the Cal loudspeaker accepts AVB. Uh, also within Milan, uh, the new Milan uh, ecosystem. Um, there is processing, which means that we have uh, five band parametric EQ delay, and we can store as much as four presets. Then there is a uh, logic IO, which allows us to override the loudspeaker for voice evacuation messaging. Uh, we can mute the loudspeaker. Uh, we can check whether the loudspeaker is uh, uh, operating or not. And the loudspeaker even has an OLED button that shows you all sorts of useful information. And let's look at those one at a time, starting with the analog inputs. We use six pin Phoenix connectors for the analog inputs. Balanced speaks for itself, which means that there are three, uh, three uh, six pin Phoenix receptacles on the um, rear panel, which also have a loop through uh, function. So you can send the signal, the analog signal, that is to say from one Cal loudspeaker uh, to the next. On top of that, there is a AES EBU um, receptacle over here. Speaks uh, for itself, other than being uh, a digital signal. Then there is the on status LED, and that LED during normal operation will uh, glow green. However, that being said, should the internal temperature exceed 75 degrees Celsius, then that LED will turn a solid yellow and the loudspeaker's gain is reduced by three decibels until the temperature drops below 75 degrees once more. Besides the on status LED, we also have uh, limit LEDs. Uh, the left LED shows you the uh, shows you the status of the low frequency channels whereas the right LED shows you the status 
of the right um, of the high frequency your tweeters your high frequency uh, channels should any one of those be blinking then you know uh, that uh, limiting has been activated okay now these logic IO connectors uh, they're by no means rocket science they're super convenient uh, there are several pins we're gonna look at them uh, one at a time and these pins are being triggered when they receive a DC voltage that lives 3 to 20 volts above the common voltage or COM voltage. And what kind of functionality does this offer us? Well, for example, we can recall presets externally by making use of the uh, logic pins. And that means that uh, if you look at table one, once a voltage of three volt or more DC voltage is presented to any of these pins, you can recall any of the four presets that are living in that particular Cal loudspeaker. Um, from the factory, by default, the loudspeaker comes with four presets, which are four different beams with uh, four different spreads. That is to say, different combinations of uh, angle and uh, spread as we're about to see because preset number one in the top left corner is a five degree beam width if you will a spread and it's aiming dead ahead there is no tilt in the beam whereas preset number two that comes with the loudspeaker out of the factory is the same five degree beam angle or a uh, beam spread but it's been tilted upwards by five degrees whereas preset number three is a wider beam it's a 70 uh, pardon me it is a 70 degree uh, spread but it's been tilted downwards by 25 degree and preset number four is again another five degree beam but this has been steered all the way to the maximum which is uh, negative 30 degrees those beams live in the loudspeaker when it comes from the factory that being said as we're about to discover we are free to assign any beam of our choosing and we're gonna look at that at great length so here you see such a beam uh, this would be your preset number one uh, at four kilohertz it's a five degree beam straight ahead zero degree tilt angle and you see that that is a beautifully defined beam regardless whether it's pointing dead ahead or is being steered downwards at a 25 degree angle I hope that everybody can appreciate that this is very very well behaved okay so that is those four presets what other logic is there on the rear panel of a Cal loudspeaker um, very important the active audio input can be muted or replaced with an override input such as an alarm or emergency announcement source and that means that you have to trigger one of those logic pins, which could be the override pin, it could be the mute pin. And whenever there is a voltage of uh, three, D, uh, 3 volts DC or more being presented to those pins, any of those pins, with respect to the common, um, common voltage, then either the mute is triggered or the override is triggered. Um, this is already a, a small section from Compass, but we're gonna we're gonna look at that uh, in great detail. But here you can already tell that by default, under normal operation, this loudspeaker uh, passes audio which is presented to its AVB A input. So we're looking at a digital signal uh, which is fed through AVB. That is the normal operation. However, should somebody trigger the override, then that channel that input channel is muted and is being replaced for analog one so whatever voice evacuation message is presented analog to input one is now overriding the normal operation default input when there is no uh, chaos when there is no crisis when there's no fire that requires an emergency announcement so um, everybody can surely appreciate that that is very valuable uh, in in commercial centers or in airport terminals or in train stations furthermore very convenient is that the Cal loudspeakers have an internal power supply a 5 volt DC power supply which is a convenient means for controlling its logic IO feeder uh, features um, because you can use this uh, to pass through uh, an external relay or switch um, 
without having to the need for an external uh, power supply as well. And of course, as we saw during the introduction, there's network con connectivity, but it also supports AVB also in the new Milan ecosystem. However, <clears throat> in this case, it's very important uh, to realize that within Milan, there is a primary and a secondary network. And the silkscreen printing on the back panel of a Cal loudspeaker suggests that the left RJ45 is intended for Ethernet or network, whereas the right RJ45 is uh, intended only for AVB, which is not true. You can use both uh, ports at once. However, in a redundant network, uh, you have to commit to using the left port as primary network in your AVB ecosystem and the second port as secondary uh, network in your AVB ecosystem, uh, regardless of what the silkscreen printing uh, says. And here you see uh, an example, okay, where we have a mixing console feeding a Galaxy and then the Galaxy has two AVB connections. One goes to the primary network and makes its way back to the Cal loudspeaker and one goes through the secondary network and makes its way back to the Cal loudspeaker as well. So that is something uh, to be mindful of. And finally, the fault contact. The fault contact shows us whether the loudspeaker is uh, uh, in normal operation or whether it's turned off or not working. Again, these are relays, which means that uh, there are several ways that we can use this to our advantage. Because imagine that you have uh, a, a large number of CALs living within your commercial center, then you do not have uh, the time nor the means to send the person every day to make sure uh, are the cows up and running so having this kind of information all being fed back to a control room is of course super super valuable and finally the OLED button during OLED um, during startup the OLED displays what is the cows network port and pushing the OLED during normal operation uh, will sh allow you to see the firmware version MAC address uh, what is the name of the Cal loudspeaker and all important information that you might need to uh, deploy the Cal successfully. All of this can also be found, of course, in the Cal user guide. Finally, a little bit about power consumption. Different models require uh, different uh, power. This, uh, <laughs> so I changed this chart at the last possible moment, and that means that the colors have shifted a little bit um, let me attempt at doing something which is super ill-advised, uh, which is fixing this in real time. Okay, those colors need to go there. Apologies about that. Uh, that shows you the long-term continuous um, um, current consumption, and we recommend that you take 30% more of that just to make sure that there are no peak voltage drops at the service entry. Okay, so... Those are the specifications of Cal. Um, but how do you mount a Cal loudspeaker? Is that super involved? No, it's, you know, it's, it's a straightforward process. But before we talk about rigging, I am, you know, I'm obligated to inform you that all Marisan products and accessories must be used in accordance with local, state, federal and industry regulations. It's the owner's and or user's responsibility to evaluate the reliability of any rigging method prior to application. Rigging should always be carried out only by experienced professionals. Inspect rigging hardware regularly and also before each usage. Always use certified and properly rated rigging hardware and ensure not to exceed the rated loading weight documented in the operating instructions and or assembly guides. And finally, always use safety cable safety steel as secondary support. That being said, CAL comes with many, many, many wall mount brackets. Um, Standard, the CAL comes with the um, following uh, rigging accessories, which is a wall mount top plate, a wall mount bottom plate, a top bracket, a bottom bracket, an end cap for both sides of the loudspeakers, just to uh, make the rigging as inconspicuous as possible uh, by using those end caps. So, um, how does it go? The wall mount plates support, of course, the top and the bottom of the loudspeaker, so they are screwed or mounted to the wall. And, of course, the distance between the top and the bottom wall plate is determined by which CAL model that you use. And it comes with quick release pins. So once those wall plates are in place, once they are mounted to the surface where you want to deploy your CAL loudspeaker, 
the next step would be to attach the top bracket and bottom bracket to both ends of the Cal loudspeaker. Once the top and bottom bracket have been attached to the Cal loudspeaker, you can lower the base of the Cal loudspeaker. That is to say, you can lower the bottom bracket into the bottom wall plate. And then once the loudspeaker is in that bottom wall plate, you can insert the quick release pin, lift it upright and insert the top quick release pin. And then the loudspeaker is in place. That being said, better safe than sorry. So we re recommend you that even though the quick lock pins um, make it a secure solution, we still recommend you that you additionally secure the top as well as the bottom. And we recommend that you use Loctite and make sure that those bolts are tightened securely. And finally, you attach your end caps, one at the top and one at the bottom, which reveals, uh, all, which hides um, the rigging um, very elegantly, very um, in a very cosmetically pleasing way. Um, that is two points, but that being said, there is also a single point uh, solution that allows you to pick up the Cal loudspeaker at one point and still make sure that the loudspeaker remains vertical, like remains perpendicular to the horizontal, even though you're using a single pickup point. Okay, that constitutes rigging. So um, let's talk about real world application. Let's talk about uh, how to use this in compass because Cal you know, is very flexible for installation. The vertical beam is programmable as we're about to discover precise directivity and minimizes destructive room interaction, which is what you need in those reverberant spaces as we saw earlier today. However, before I can start changing the beam, we first need to get connected to the Cal Column Array loudspeaker. And for that, all that I need is a computer running Compass Control software. Now, how to download that and how to operate that is something that we discussed in prior webinars called Introduction to Compass, either by myself in English or by Hugo Arce in Spanish, which you can find on that YouTube channel called Thinking Sound and a network cable. That being said, if you are more interested in using AVB in a Myersound ecosystem, then I will show you a user guide a little bit later that uh, is very, very worthwhile uh, reading. So, I have the computer running Compass, I have the network cable, and all that's need to do is to directly connect the computer to one of both Ethercon connectors on the rear panel, one, to the, one of those two RJ45s, and um, and since we use IPv6, like you have come to expect of us in Galaxy, there should be no uh, there should be no uh, chore of having to enter IPv4, IP, IPv4 addresses. Uh, if your system supports IPv6, it is plug and play. Uh, no need for a switch in this in this application. Just connect the computer directly to the Cal loudspeaker, and it should be talking to each other. That being said, um, as promised, there is uh, a lot more to discover about this, and that means that um, um, that means that um, there is a document which you will find on the website, which is our AVB networking guide, and that document is intended to serve as a guide for designing and managing AVB networks using Myerson products. I highly recommend that you read that guide. Uh, super useful, not just for Cal loudspeakers, but also for using AVB in a Meyer ecosystem. Uh, uh, all together. Okay, so um, there we go. Another thing that we need to do is download the Cal pattern files that do not come standard with Compass. It's an additional zip archive that you need to download uh, uh, and it contains all the possible beam angles and beam spreads for each of the three Cal models. And that's the first thing that we need to look at where do I download those and how do I download those if I want to use Cal? Okay, um, this is going to be a little bit of a repetition of previous step. It starts by registering to the website. So in order to register to the website, you go to myersound.com and then you click on the button register in the top right corner, which will show up a form. You're kindly asked to um, Complete the form, make sure that all fields that have an asterisk uh, are being completed, and then you should check your email and confirm your registration. 
Once you've successfully confirmed your registration, we can now log in to the website in the top corner uh, of, of the home page. So, how to download those files after I've successfully registered to the website. As I said, go to the top right corner on the home page where you will find login. Once you've clicked on login, uh, a window a dialog will pop up asking you for your credentials, which are the ones that you entered during the registration process. Once you are successfully logged into the website, we kindly ask you to go to the products top and in the product stop you will get a list of the entire Meyer Sound portfolio and if you scroll down the list at one point you will find uh, Compass and if you click on Compass then in Compass you will find three tops which is your overview software and support videos please click on the software top and then on the software page if you scroll down a little bit you will find one gigabit of uh, one gigabyte apologies one gigabyte of Cal pattern files containing every possible beam for every possible model. So please download that zip archive and once you've done so we need to talk where do I need to extract this archive because when you install Compass regardless of what version you have within the application folder that is to say the folder where the application lives within that folder by design there is already a folder which is called Cal and if you open that folder, then you will find that in that folder there is a readme.txt, there's a text file. And if you open that text file, you will find a set of instructions both for Mac OS as well as Windows. Open the Cal pattern file which you downloaded from the compass uh, 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 that you downloaded and extract it to the following folder which is the compass galaxy settings folder which is located in your home directory okay that sounds rather cryptic where does the compass galaxy settings folder live well on mac os it lives in your home folder in there and then in your home folder there's the compass galaxy settings and within that folder you want to create a folder which is called cal and in that folder you want to extract that zip archive so all the pattern files within the zip archive have to go in the folder cal in compass galaxy settings the same is true for a windows environment where you have your username then you have the same folder compass galaxy settings okay and over there you need to create a folder called cal and that's where you extract that one gigabyte of pattern files all of that is, ex in, is, is uh, explained in great detail in that txt file that lives in the cal folder in the application folder so that's where the pattern files go once you have successfully ins installed those uh, files we can start using cal in compass however in order to use cal in compass okay we need to take several steps because with compass we can select and activate override inputs as we already saw during the introduction we can configure the vertical beam width as well as the tilt angle we can split the beam if we desire to do so except for the Cal32 model we can process the beams which is also true for two beams as we're about to discover uh, and change gain delay and parametric EQ of course we can edit and store and recall and organize our Cal presets and since it has a built-in RMS module we can monitor the status and performance of the loudspeaker in the RMS tab so there's your entire sound system in one loudspeaker enclosure but in order to have access to this functionality the first thing that we need to do is to enable the show CalTop so I'm gonna change to the compass control software which you see over here and notice that in the compass preferences the show CalTop by default is grayed out which means that if we look at our at our top two parent tops there's only the compass top there's only the processors top but there's no cal top living next to it in order to enable the cal top we have to click show cal top and notice that in the top right corner we see that now there is a third parent top called cal and once we click on that top it takes us by default to the cal inventory because in the cal parent top there are two subtops one is your inventory and one is the control so what can we do what can we do in our Cal inventory we can add loudspeakers or detect loudspeakers that live on the network 
I don't have a cal with me at this point, so I'm going to use a virtual cal for the purpose of this demonstration. However, tomorrow, fellow Meyersound colleague Oscar Barrientos is going to do the same presentation in Spanish, and he is fortunate to have an actual cal loudspeaker, so I'm told, so he will be able to do the same, uh, the same instruction using an actual loudspeaker. Okay, so um, I'm going to use a uh, Cal 96, and notice that I've added the Cal 96 uh, to my inventory. Normally, this would be populated with a MAC address for that particular Cal, its IPv6 address, uh, its status, what firmware version is running over there, its serial number, whether it's muted, polarity inverted, whether the gain is set, what input you are using, all of that I can see from within my Cal inventory. This is also where you would update the firmware and so on and so forth, but we'll leave that for a more advanced training on Cal. Okay, so I've added a Cal loudspeaker. I can click on it, and now there's two ways for me to control that loudspeaker. I can click on Control over here, or we can go to the Control Top. Both would take us to the same place. So let's go to the Control Top, in which case our window splits in half. On the left, I still see my inventory, and on the right, I see all control options, which are currently grayed out because I haven't selected my virtual cal. So I'm going to click on that cal and notice that suddenly the right side of my graphical user interface comes to life. And for example, I could call this my cal 96, in which case this has now been renamed. I can also add comments and say that this one is maybe house left. Okay, in which case uh, I know where to look when I'm looking for that particular cal. So within this dialog, we have uh, we have several tops. There's the input settings, there's the beam control, there's the processing top, there's the preset library, there's the rear panel, RMS, and extensive logging features. I propose we start by looking at the input settings first by clicking on that top for this particular Cal loudspeaker. So this is where we assign the analog, digital, or AVB inputs, that is to say audio inputs. By default, it goes to analog input 1, but maybe you want to use input 2 or input 3. Remember, there's three analog inputs with loop-through loop functionality on the back of a Cal loudspeaker. We can also choose the AES-EBU signal that we can present to the rear panel, and then there's even as much as three AVB streams to choose from. Below the inputs, you also see, again, a small pictogram of the rear panel, uh, including uh, your shield, your plus and your minus for your inputs, as well your shield plus and minus for your outputs, all very convenient. Now, for all I know, I'm running an AVB ecosystem, which would be very elegant, and by default, we use that input for program content. That being said, we know that the Cal loudspeaker has an override feature and maybe the voice evacuation message is being presented to analog input number one and that means that once the override function is triggered once that logic pin is seeing 3 to 20 volt DC more than the common then my AVB1 input is muted and the Cal automatically switches over to analog input one and the voice evacuation message is heard. There you have your input settings. The next thing is of course going to be the beam control. Now depending on your model you can have a single beam such as the 32 or you can have a dual beam, a split beam. And notice that for the 64 or the 96 models we have you know different options. In case of the 96, I can do a top split, which is basically a 32 living on top of a 64. Or I could do a bottom split, which is a 64 living on top of a 32. So depending on your make and model, you can split the beam. Let's add a Cal 64 and see how the Cal 64, what options we have in the Cal 64. If we go to the Cal 64, we see that we no longer have the option of top or bottom. With the Cal 64, we only have the option 
of a center split, which means that it essentially becomes a 32 on top of a 32. Um, so depending on the make and model, we have different, different options. Okay, let me remove the 64 and let's go back to the 96. So this is where we set a single beam, a top split or a bottom split. Let's start with a single beam. Single beam, I can change the angle of the beam and I can change the spread of the beam, which is very intuitive. By using this rotary encoder, I can change the angle of the beam uh, or I can use the plus and minus keys to do it in one degree increments. And using the other rotary encoder, I can change the spread of the beam in five degree steps or narrow it once more. I can do that using the encoders or I can use the buttons. If I desire, I can also use my keyboard to introduce a value manually if I desire to do so. What do you need to know about beam control? Beam control is not dynamic. That is to say, when you adjust the beam, you will not hear in real time a change. Because in order to make use of the beam that you chose, depending on its uh, angle and its, uh, its, its beam spread and its angle, you need to upload, you need to commit that change, you need to upload that beam file, which you downloaded before, to the loudspeaker itself. You need to commit those beam settings by saying apply to active preset slot, of which there are four. These four are populated from, from the factory, but you can override them with a beam of your choosing. And that means that once you've dialed in the beam settings of your liking, you need to apply those to one of those four presets. And then the beam file that you downloaded from the website will be uploaded to the Cal column array loudspeaker. And depending on the make and model, that might take a little bit more time, that might take a little bit less time. For Cal 32, it takes about eight minutes, because it's only 32 transducers and amplifier channels and DSP. Whereas for Cal 96, which is, uh, which is um, uh, uh, 96 transducers, amplifier channels and processing channels, it takes about 20 minutes. So do not expect to hear the beam change in real time. You have to uh, apply it to the active preset slot, which we do by clicking on that button. This is also the notification that we got. When we change the beam, we get a dialogue that's saying in order to for, in for, for these settings to take place, we need to apply it to one of those four presets. I'm using a virtual cal at this point, so I have no such luxury, but hopefully Oscar tomorrow in the Spanish version, he can actually show that process and then somehow make a very entertaining conversation for eight minutes to kill the time. Okie dokie. So that is where you change your beam. Um, that being said, there are some tools in here that we can use uh, to our advantage that allow us to um, estimate beam angles. Because over here we have a canvas and on the canvas I see my Cal loudspeaker sitting. I see the beam spread, which is indicated, uh, is indicated over there. It's currently a 10 degree beam spread and it shows me the beam angle, which is currently negative nine degree. Uh, this is hard to read. This is as big as I can make it, but rest assured those values that we see in those two fields are also on the canvas. But we can work, we can do much, much more with this canvas uh, than just changing those uh, encoders. And in order for that, I'm gonna go back to the uh, keynote and I wanna show you something about how to change the units and how to use the shortcuts. Now these shortcuts you would also find by clicking the help button in that dialog. Because there are several things that we can do. We can zoom by using the scroll wheel on a conventional mouse. I use a trackball, but over here for those that uh, don't know this, uh, which is doubt, I, I doubt that everybody's familiar with this. I, I mean, I'm confident that everybody's familiar with it. There's a scroll wheel over here and the scroll wheel allows me to zoom in or zoom out of the canvas. Um, and we can drag the canvas if we press uh, shift uh, left click. So let's see that in action. Um, what happens if I use 
my scroll wheel. If I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom into the compass. That is to say, that is to say, wherever my cursor lives, it zooms in or it zooms out. Very convenient. Um, I can also use shift left click, in which case my cursor changes into a hand icon, which allows me to left click and drag the canvas any way I see fit. What options do we have? Uh, we can draw an audience using the uh, command key or uh, control key on a Windows machine, command key using left click and drag. So let's put that into action. Let's go back to our compass environment and yet let's press command left click which allows me to draw an audience. This is very much like the visual architectural aid that you are, uh, that you are uh, used to from us in MapXT which allows me to draw a line segment. I see the length of the line segment, I see the height of the last row, this would be cross section, and I see the depth of the audience plane. It is currently also in feet, which depending on which corner of the world you live uh, might be inconvenient. So um, why don't we change that from feet into meters? Uh, in order to do that, we have to go to the compass parent top. And in the compass parent top, there is another top called Cal Preferences. And if we click on Cal Preferences, we can uh, hide or show the grid that we currently have and we can change the units from imperial units to uh, metric. So let's change that to um, metric and if we now go back to our call top we see that the units that were previously feet are now meters and any one of these square cells that we see over here the grid are one meter uh, steps. If at any time I want to reset my view I just click the reset view button um, or um, left click anywhere in the pane and then that line uh, disappears. So you will see that if I do command left click that each, uh, that each uh, cell in the grid is a one meter increment, is a one meter increment, is a one meter increment. And I can use this to estimate uh, my beam angle. For all I know I want to cover uh, people that sit uh, at roughly, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meters uh, to the Cal loudspeaker, we might have a rising audience plane that goes all the way up to uh, five meters. And now I want to use my Cal loudspeaker to uh, send the sound to the people um, sitting over there. Um, how can I estimate those beam angles? Well, what I like to do is uh, click on the beam, left click and drag, and that allows me to tilt the beam up and down and notice that when it's facing dead ahead we're looking at a beam angle of zero degrees whereas if we point all the way down by clicking dragging that it is all the way down to 30 degrees which is as far as it goes so I make a mental note of that that it's 30 degrees to the first row zero degrees to the last row and now I can left click on the estimate beam angle which will bring up a dialogue and it asks you um, what is the inclination to the nearest seat well that was 30 degrees and now comes a little caveat we do not enter negative 30 we have to enter positive 30 because we're doing a down tilt in this dialogue and what was the angle of inclination to the last row well that was zero degrees the loudspeaker was aiming that ahead with those two values in place all that I have to do is press OK and once I press OK you see that both the angle of the beam as well as the spread of the beam has been set and that would be my initial my initial goal and all that I need to do is now apply those beam settings to a preset slot so that's a very convenient way to get you into the ballpark uh, that being said if I have a top split or a bottom split well then all sorts of options are at my disposal uh, that are beyond the scope of today's webinar but I can now have complete separate control over the top beam and I have complete separate control over the bottom beam and I can even mute those if I desire to do so. Let's go back to the single beam scenario. Let's imagine that we have a beam of our liking then we can go to the processing top and in the processing top it tells me that I'm using a single beam 
and I have five bands of parametric EQ. This is exactly the same as in Compass. Everything you see over here, uh, including changing the corner frequency or the width of the, uh, of the filter, boosting or cutting frequencies, that is all the same way as you're expected in Compass and Galaxy. We can delay the loudspeaker uh, in milliseconds or any other unit of our choosing. We can bypass those EQs if we desire to do so uh, one at a time, or we can bypass all uh, EQ altogether. So if you're familiar with, um, if you're familiar with um, Compass and Galaxy or Callisto or Galileo, this, uh, this should come naturally. Notice that with one beam, I have one channel of processing, but should I have a split beam for whatever reason, then I also have two channels of processing, one for the upper beam and one for the lower beam, and I can mute the upper beam and I can mute the lower beam. So if you have an application where you have people living downstairs and people living on a balcony, or you are covering the same uh, audience plane with two beams rather than one beam, uh, then there might be days where the house is half full, in which case you only need the lower beam, you might want to mute the upper beam, and when the house is filled to capacity, you might want to use both beams, or one beam that goes to the balcony, making this very versatile, including uh, separate processing uh, power over both beams, if you use the split beam uh, feature. Finally, all of that can be stored in presets in a similar fashion, uh, presets in a similar fashion as uh, as you're accustomed from us in uh, Compass and Galaxy devices. Um, does processing happen in real time? Uh, do you mean does the processing, the equalization of the beams happen in real time? And the answer is yes. It's only uploading the beams themselves. Once you've defined a beam, then uploading the beam to a preset in your Cal device, that is the thing that takes time, but the processing itself, the signal processing itself for a single beam or for split beam, that happens in real time. So if you want to voice uh, or calibrate your beams, then you can do that in real time and there is no reason to upload that, um, to have to wait for that. So yes, that happens um, in real time. Presets live over here. Um, switching presets goes virtually instantaneously. Okay, so once the beam files live in each preset, then changing presets goes uh, uh, functionally instantaneously. Uh, so that is very convenient, that goes very quickly once those beam files have been uploaded to each preset slot. Okay, in the rear panel, um, in the rear panel we um, have additional options, which is do we use Compass to select our presets? Or do we uh, enable the logic uh, circuitry on the rear panel to use uh, one of those pins to trigger a preset? That's where we, where we uh, change those options uh, on the rear panel, whether we want to do it from within Compass or whether we want to do it uh, using the rear panel. Um, of course, we see the status of our, of our LED, our on-status LEDs we discussed before. We see whether the limiters have engaged in, uh, and like we discussed before, we can see which input is being used and uh, we, can, uh, we can see whether the override is being used and there's a nice feature that allows us to actually test whether our fault contacts are, are working. So that is pretty self-explanatory which brings us to the following top which is my remote monitoring system top and here we see all the metrics for each individual transducer. We see the average voltage, we see the peak voltage, we see the current, we see uh, whether there's limiting going on, I see the temperature. And in the 96, this will show you the information for 96 channels. So we have, you know, we have wonderful detailed information for the health of each of uh, those uh, transducers. Um, all of that can be saved in a report and then there is extensive logging features but I propose that we discuss those another time. Um, might be good to point out that if I have um, multiple CALs, for example if I have another CAL 96, um, which for all I know is how to write, how's right, that I can, uh, 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 that's my other CAL, okay, and for all I know, this might be house right. 
And if I want to upload the same beam to multiple units, I can choose enable uh, multi-select. And if I enable multi-select, then shift click allows me to uh, allows me shift left click allows me to select multiple cal devices and upload the same beam and do the same processing to those multiple cal devices rather of having to do it once at a time which is also very convenient when you're commissioning uh, larger systems when the settings are mismatched you notice that you get messaging that says careful you're having mixed settings but this is where we can even uh, operate multiple cals at once. Okay, that pretty much concludes how to work with cal loudspeakers in a Compass environment. All of that can be, of course, stored as a project in a similar fashion, in a similar fashion as working with Galaxy devices, uh, but that speaks pretty much for itself. Which means that I have pretty much come to the end of my presentation. That being said, as I said earlier today, um, tomorrow my Mexican colleague Oscar Barrientos is going to do the same presentation in Spanish. Uh, he, from what, I, from what I'm told, he has access to a real Cal loudspeaker, so uh, he might actually be able to show you some upload and, and more metrics. Um, later this week, Wednesday, I'm very much looking forward to this. We're going to have a case study where Martin Reich and uh, Jose Godin uh, together are going to uh, do a case study of Fête de Vigneron in Switzerland, which made use of many, many, many call loudspeakers as part of a super project. Uh, over here you can see barely three, but rest assured these are only a few. There are many, many more. There are two Cal loudspeakers mounted on a single post. One is firing up, one is firing down. This is super spectacular. There's Cal's over here uh, in, the, uh, in the money seats. Uh, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be very, um, very exciting. That will be Wednesday, and they're going to talk at great length about how to use Cal in an environment, creative environment, mind you, like the one we see over here. Uh, today's webinar will, of course, be uploaded to the YouTube uh, Thinking Sound channel, where you will also find a copy of all other webinars. Uh, those webinars are being viewed very often, which is music to our ears. Uh, thank you very much.